Okay, this sermon's entitled, The Degrees of Hell. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 90 reads, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth, and to the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God, Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. Now turn over to Psalm 130. <clears throat> Psalm 130, and hold your place there. Now, the Bible makes it very clear that everyone is created equally. And when it comes to you know pigeonholing people, that's not something I like to do. I don't like to sit there and compare people and say, Well, you're, you're, you're in the realm of the grassroots, or you're you know, upper class or you're a blue collar versus a white collar, or pink collar, or whatever. And it's not that big of a deal when somebody, you know, considers themselves in the upper echelon of, you know, human achievement. Or maybe they have, you know, a financial status that surpasses somebody else. And I don't think we should start ranking each other like that, because that's not right. And and when it comes to salvation, when it comes to worthiness and unworthiness, nobody deserves to go to heaven. Therefore, salvation is given to everybody equally. It's all by grace. And there's no such thing as, you know, meriting or earning or deserving salvation. Now, this may be a supervenient concept to most people because they just, they've been believing wrong their whole life. And they need to be disillusionized by the truth, and they need to wake up because salvation is by grace, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And in Psalm 131, it reads in verse 3, this, ta- this lets us know about the fairness or the equity, you know, of God. It says, if thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Now, that's a good question. If God is, was going to mark, let's say he has like a gigantic chalkboard or a blackboard, and he's going to you know, make little tally marks and tabulate or annotate everything we do wrong. He's going to sit there and just like <clears throat> start counting. Every, every, every time we sin, the, the, the question is, who shall stand? And the answer is nobody. So, that tells us that everybody is a sinner. Everybody has fallen short or come short of the glory of God. The, the King James says, come short of the glory of God. Everybody <clears throat> is undeserving of, of going to heaven. That's why salvation is free is free to everybody. And it's offered to everybody as a free gift. The Bible says, whosoever will, let him come and take, you know, and, and drink of the water of life freely. I'm paraphrasing. So when it comes to salvation, it, it, salvation is for everybody, and it's Jesus Christ died for everyone equally, and that's clear. But see, there are other aspects you know, of the Bible that are you know, not so you know, equal. Okay, Like, for instance, earning rewards in heaven. God's not going to reward everybody equally, and there are going to be different degrees of heaven as well. Now turn over to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, we see an example of you know, a degree in heaven. And there are many degrees, I believe, and it has to do with, you know, what a person did, did in this lifetime. Okay, salvation's not of works. Rewards in heaven, you know, it is of works. If a person sits around and does nothing with their whole life, you know, just becomes a sluggard, you know, the proverbial couch potato, and does absolutely nothing, they're just completely sedentary, around the clock, you know, they're saved by the grace of God, they believed on Jesus Christ, they're going to heaven, but when it comes to rewards, they're not going to get a lot of rewards because, you know, that, that, would, that would not be fair. <clears throat> of course, when it comes to salvation, it's not fair. But see, God still rewards people, and there are degrees. Hebrews chapter 11, let's take a look at verse 35. It, it reads, Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured. Talking about in this lifetime, they were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Now, we see the concept of a better resurrection. Now, everybody who, everyone who is saved is going to be resurrected unto eternal life. They already have eternal life, and they're going to heaven. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall never die. I'm, of course, I'm you know, just kind of <clears throat> synopsizing those verses. I'm just kind of you know, ab- you know, ab- abridging them. But my point is, Everyone's going to have a resurrected body in heaven, but see, it, it talks about right here a better resurrection that lets us know that there are degrees. 
And we think of like comparatives and superlatives. Big, bigger, and biggest. See this concept about hell in Matthew chapter 23 when Jesus is dealing with the, uh, the Pharisees. Look at verse 14. It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Now once again, the adjective greater denotes a degree. <clears throat> And we, we even see where it says the lowest hell. Turn back to Psalm 86. Psalm 86, we see where it says the lowest hell. That tells us that there are different degrees of hell. <clears throat> let's take a look at verse, let's see. Verse 13, For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Now, why are there degrees? That's a good question. Now think about it though, if let's say a person had, had not very much exposure to the gospel, minimal exposure to the gospel in their lifetime. They didn't really understand, you know, salvation, they didn't understand the things of God, but they still they still rejected it, they still shunned it. Maybe they labeled themselves as a an agnostic or something, and they still rejected salvation. Now that person's going to hell, obviously. Anyone whose name is not found in the book of life is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Okay, he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Everyone who's lost and dies in that state goes to hell. But see, imagine a person who had an overabundant amount of opportunities to respond to the gospel, even to a stratospheric degree where they've been in church their whole life and they've heard the plan of salvation over and over and over again, and they see tracks all the time everywhere they go in bathroom stalls, and they have co-workers who are Christians, you know, constantly be laboring about the things of God and the things of salvation. That person who has rejected all these opportunities is going to be in a more <clears throat> severe part of hell. That's why you, you could say the low, he could, he's going to be in a lower part of hell, or at the, you know, the lowest hell. Another example of this would be some false prophet. They kept teaching wrong. They kept teaching lordship salvation, or lordship damnation is more befitting. Kept teaching you know, that Jesus only died for the elect. And they just kept rejecting the truth, and rejecting the scriptures, and rejecting the Bible. When they die, they're going to drop into hell. They're going to be in a very low part of hell, because they, had, they were like right there in the center of the truth, in the epicenter where, where, where the truth is being taught all over the place, and they just kept rejecting it, and kept going their own way, and kept teaching false. Those people are going, going to be in hell as well, to a different degree, to a greater degree, because they, they knew better. So that's, that's why there are degrees. Now turn over to Matthew chapter 11. We see an example of this as well. Matthew chapter 11. Now, either way, hell's going to be horrible. I'm not trying to downplay, I'm not trying to, like, ameliorate or <clears throat> trying to attenuate hell at all. I'm not trying to reduce it to any, anything, you know, than what it is. It's going to be horrific. Weeping and gnashing of teeth, you know, it's going to be, you know, f fire and brimstone, everlasting burnings, the Bible says, hell fire. But see, there are different degrees, and the Bible's clear on this because... It says in verse 22, let's start off with verse 22, and we'll stop at verse 25, or actually verse 24. It says, But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. Now, what, is that, what does that let us know? Okay, that, it, that tells us that there are different degrees. It's going to be more tolerable for, for this group than this group. Okay, let's keep reading. Verse 23, And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Now, the reason why is because certain people had more revelation than others. They, 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 they're going to be... <clears throat> held accountable to a different degree. Okay, like I said, imagine if a person had very little exposure to the gospel, but they, but they still rejected it. They will go to hell, but the person who's had, you know, let's just say ten times more exposure, and yet they rejected it, will be suffering in greater torments than the other person. And that's just the way it is. That's why it's, it's very important that people do not reject the gospel at all. You know, it's a very simple message. It's, it's a message of, you know, good news. You know, Jesus Christ died on the cross for the sins of the whole world. 
Okay, he died, was buried, and rose again. And because he did this, we can go to heaven as a free gift. And he's offered the gift to everybody. Okay, if you knew of the gift of God, you would have asked, and he would have given thee living water, the Bible says. The Bible says, you know, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. It's extremely simple, and nobody has, you know, to go to hell at all. Okay, there's no excuse for not believing on Christ. It's none. And people that do not believe on Christ, and they just keep rejecting it, and keep rejecting the gospel, and keep rejecting the grace of God, and keep rejecting the scripture, keep rejecting the offer of salvation, they will end up in hell, and they will burn forever. Let's go ahead and close with, with Revelation chapter 20. Hell is a very serious thing, and that's why I wanted to preach on this subject of different degrees. Not that there, Like I said earlier, not that there are going to be degrees that are tolerable. No, none of it is. Okay, a lake of fire. Nobody can, can withstand that. Nobody can, can handle that. Okay, verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So it's gonna, going to be bad no matter what. But I believe there are degrees based on how much exposure somebody had and how, much, how many opportunities they had. And yet, if they reject and just keep rejecting it, it's going to be that much worse for them. But nevertheless, God gives everyone an opportunity to be saved. I believe that. That's found in John chapter 1. Let's go ahead and turn there. And people do not need to be rejecting this opportunity at all. <clears throat> John chapter 1 says in verse 7, The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So everyone has a chance. Everyone's had the light of Jesus Christ, you know, and you know, some revelation of God, you know, shown to them. Now, if they reject it, then that's 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 on them. It's their problem. But th nevertheless, he lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So nobody has to go to hell. And people go there because they reject the truth. They have a hatred for the truth. And they will burn forever. Nobody's going to get out of hell. But I just believe there are degrees. Just like it says a better resurrection, it also says a greater damnation. So that's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.